Howdy, Doug Turnbull here again. The uh, last time that we uh, met, I was describing my telescope to you and my explanation of uh, the how the mounting worked was kind of garbled and confused. I was speaking kind of off the cuff and I used an erroneous term as a matter of fact. So I'm going to correct that and show you how this mounting works. Uh, so it's right behind me and I'm going to I'm going to point to the various features. This is the, the mounting, as I pointed out to you the last time. Uh, the, uh, the mounting has two basic axes. One is the equatorial axis, and the other one is the declination axis. And I'm going to demonstrate how that works here in a moment. But first, I need to show you uh, that the telescope, the equatorial axis is pointed in such a way that it's, when it's aimed due north, it's pointed right exactly at the uh, point, at the, at basically at the north star. So you rotate until it's pointing exactly due north right at the North Star, and then what this means is that your equatorial axis, that's what it's called, is aligned perfectly with the axis of the Earth. This way, as the Earth spins on its axis, you can offset that motion by rotating the telescope in the opposite direction, and therefore keeping your uh, image centered in your telescope. So this is the equatorial axis. Now, suppose you wanted to see an object that was, if an object was directly overhead, uh, it would be, the telescope would track and follow, follow the star you would have to do it manually because I don't have a clock drive on this one. But that's how it would work. Now, if the object was lower down in the sky, you would rotate your declination axis, which is this one, until you located the object. Then the telescope, like in this case, if it was due south, uh, then as as the night went on, you would continuously rotate the telescope, and it would stay aligned. You would not have to change the declination axis. The only axis that would be rotating would be the equatorial axis, and it would track the star perfectly. And you could observe it through your eyepiece. And that's basically how an equatorial mount functions. This is what's called a German equatorial mount. There are numerous other types of equatorial mounts. There's, a, a, there's an English mount, a, a French equatorial, there's a bunch of them. Uh, this, is, this, and, this one works pretty good for most observations except when the object is directly overhead. We get a, it, it starts to conflict with the uh, with the mounting. But uh, uh, the thing to do there is you simply wait until the object isn't overhead, directly overhead anymore, and then uh, pick it up, do other observations while you're waiting. The, uh, uh, that's basically how it works. Uh, two axes, uh, the declination axis allows you to aim up and down across the sky. Uh, the equatorial axis allows you to follow the, tele follow the star um, in, in order to compensate for the uh, rotation of the Earth. So you can see any star that's, that's visible using, uh, using, using this technique. 